All right. Do 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 do. Okay. <laughs> That's my theme song for the week. Hi, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to First United Methodist Church of Loomis. We are live, well, recording live. We won't be live by the time you watch this, but hi. Um, <laughs> this is our podcast. Yes, I'm a little loopy. I had a lot of coffee this morning. Um, yeah, because I had meetings starting at six. So, um, and I won a $200 gift certificate at, at work. That's so cool. Yeah. Well, we have this whole contest. It's it's a new billing system. We all had to adopt policies and stuff and follow along. It was basically like insurance bingo. <laughs> it really was. But I, I, I got the most it. I got the most points. So anyway, but welcome to our podcast this week. Um, my name is Ray. I'm the music director. We've got our pastor Allison Berry down on the bottom. Hello. And our Deacon of Christian Education over on the other side. Hello. Melanie Oliver. I had to think for a second. Wait, what's her name? <laughs> what's her name? It's that kind of, <clears throat> kind of week. So it is a yeah. lot, lot going on, and we're moving into holy heck week. Holy <laughs> week! <laughs> yeah, that's where we are. Um, it's hard to believe we're here already. I feel, I feel like we just finished mm-hmm. Advent. Yeah, I really do. Yeah. Christmas. Well, because of the weather, you know, it's not springy, it's not warm, and usually, you know, it is around Easter. So, yes, I know. And today is what the first day of sun. Um, we had a little bit of break in the rain yeah. last week, but today it's gorgeous. Mm-hmm. My backyard's still a pond, but um, yeah, the poor folks up in the mountains. Oh my gosh! Yeah, okay, like they're not going to bury get. They're not going to dig themselves out until June. Yeah, my coworker's in Incline Village, and she's she says we're just kind of sitting here. So wow, they had another six or eight inches uh, Tuesday, Wednesday. So. Wow. So are they able to get out? Like, I mean, to go to the grocery store and things like that? They are. Yes. Uh, okay. She said they are able to keep the the snow cleared out as it falls. Pretty much, they her, her husband goes out and cleans it up. Oh, but um. They tried to buy groceries for a couple of weeks. Their power's gone on and off a couple of times, but they're doing okay. Wow. Okay, I'm not going to gripe anymore about <coughs> 60 degrees is cold. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> so, my church ladies, have you had a good week so far? I'm exhausted because my son is on spring break and we stayed up late watching horror movies. I was telling you all <laughs> yeah. that. so much fun, but yeah. I work for a living. He gets to sleep in until 1130. <laughs> <laughs> Cooper, Cooper. yeah my week has been fine well like I said we're moving into holy week um so it's going to be a long week next week I think the only day the only two days I don't have at the church coming up are Monday and Tuesday and then I'm there the rest of the week because I have band rehearsal Wednesday choir rehearsal and Monday Thursday service on Thursday mm-hmm. good Friday service I won't be there on Saturday don't think no No. you don't want to show up and rehearse uh no i'm not gonna be there saturday the 8th i'm not (laughs) i'm not and then i will be that's right i will too i have to help get the flowers together oh Oh, oh, i was gonna bring it up during announcements but you know martin's got a concert on april 8th that saturday he's got uh he's at twin lotus tie again at five and seven and i'm going to his five o'clock Ooh. Oh, you are okay. Yeah. I wondered about that. So, I mean, the youth, I mean, the youth and the families are meeting at five o'clock at the church to decorate the cross on the street. Oh, they probably go to the concert after, but well, they do have a seven o'clock. So, okay, yeah. okay. So we're going to five o'clock. My friend Kathy and I. Um, she went. We were supposed to go the last time. We was at Twin Lotus Tie, and then I got sick with that flu bug I had. Oh yeah, I couldn't go. And then, um, so we're going to try to do it this time. No, should be fun. Um, last week we had, uh, scripture wise, we had the raising of Lazarus, and we had "Guide My Feet, Lord." The choir sang, which was wonderful. Um, we had a lot of stuff going on last week, and uh, I felt really bad. the The closing hymn we have not really done a lot. It was um oh poor Jerry and he did how firm a foundation yes. yes and I sent him a note um because he responded he said after last week last Sunday I should be shunned I'm like no it was brand new for you and I was like you did a great yeah, job we love having you back 
He did. And he 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 did a fantastic job. And Jerry, we're lucky to have you. Yes, we are. Amen to that. Yeah. Um, so um, I thought the service went great. I had some compliments on the choir anthem. Um, and my one of my um, I don't know, man, it's one of those contemplative hymns. Come and find find the quiet center uh-huh, uh-huh. for the opening hymn. Great stuff. Um, Allison, great go- job on your sermon. Yeah, oh, thank you. Anything else you want to share? Any other insights you may have thought about since Sunday? <laughs> I mean, you could have gone so many ways with that scripture. So yeah, it's just they're layer upon layer. So it just would have been too much to try to tackle it all. I know, but I love the way that uh, you tried to tie in. Why did Jesus weep? Yeah. Did he That's- weep because he had compassion for the people who were hurting um, and one of the things I thought of, did he weep because of the suffering that Lazarus had to go through? Yes, so that was in, yeah, plan. that was part of it too. Yeah. Was he weeping for Lazarus? Was he weeping for Jerusalem? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, just mm-hmm. knowing mm-hmm. what was going to happen. So it was like just layer upon layer. Was he weeping for himself? Yeah. You know, saying goodbye yeah. to anyone he loved. Also, yeah. Alex, the thought crossed my mind after I watched, I watched it online, um, you know how after you do pastoral care, you come home and have a good cry? Yeah. Sometimes I kind of wondered if Jesus was in that mode of just like the emotion that comes from, and especially when somebody come, you know, is dead and, and there's all those emotions. And then, you know, just being with the family. I don't know. It crossed my mind that maybe he just needed that because of what was coming up, because of what he was doing, you know, everything's coming, you know, culminating. If he was just like emotionally exhausted. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, and he just needed that good cry. Yeah, yeah. Well, and from my oh, perspective, uh, I, if you know the the play or the movie Steel Magnolias, yes. My favorite quote from Truvy is, "No one cry- cries alone in my presence." Yeah. And that's me when somebody else is upset, when someone else is hurting, I'm right there with them, mm-hmm. and there's nothing mm-hmm. that's going to stop it. Um, mm-hmm. I could watch, I, I've talked about it before. I can watch a Cheerios commercial and, and start crying so, <laughs> and, and give Tally, my husband a good laugh. So <laughs> didn't Tally Parton just get banned from some state for some song? Uh, one of her songs. Yeah. The rainbow. It's a duet. Yeah. yeah. A duet she did with Miley Cyrus. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, kind of craziness. Crazy. <laughs> I agree. So Run off the rails. This Sunday, we're moving into Palm Sunday. Um, we are. We're doing uh, music a little different this week. We're going to give the band Sunday off. Celebration okay. team will not be with us on Sunday. We're going a little old school and doing it more traditional. We're going to have Hosanna, Loud Hosanna as the children march. Mm-hmm. And we're not really going to have a children's moment this week. That kind of is mm-hmm. the children's moment. Mm-hmm. So uh, Melanie's going to march them through during the with the palms and mm-hmm. then out right to... Right to um, class. Right to class. So the kids uh, can meet me in the narthex before the service. Yeah. And we'll just, we'll gather back there and get our palms together and do our thing. So yep. all kids in the narthex. Uh, we have a brand new, well, it's not really a brand new anthem. It's older. We haven't done it in a very, very long time. Called Rejoice, Rejoice, um, Ye Daughters of Zion. Uh, it's just a really, it's an up-tempo rejoicing piece for... Mm. Jesus' march into Jerusalem. Um, even talks about he will come riding on a donkey. Uh, mm-hmm. It's one of the lyrics. It's just, it's it's fun. It's challenging. Um, I'm looking forward to us doing that on Sunday. Um, and I'll be singing Via Dolorosa to close us out, if I can get through it. Mm-hmm. I know. I, 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 I've been, um, and I'm coughing a lot today. But I was sharing with everybody on Sunday, I had a serious um, acid reflux attack on Saturday morning last week, and I inhaled. So uh, my lungs are a little bit not working well this week, and I'm coughing a lot. I'm better than I was, um, but if I don't get any better, I got to go get a chest x-ray. So, mm. but um, so far, I'm That just things. sounds painful. Oh, Sunday, I was a mess. Burning. That's oh. why as soon as church was over, I just hightailed out of there. Mm, I just, mm. I was really, I came home and slept the whole day. Wow. So, oh, good for you. Um, 
And of course, we have the scripture, Matthew 2, 21, 1 through 11, Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem. What? Only 11 verses this week? Only 11 Slackers. I know. Slackers. I know. I know. When I was reading it, I was like, it's over. (laughs) (laughs) I'm not reading a novel. It's it's just really about two pages this week where we're coming off of four for the last couple of weeks. So actually three weeks, I Uh think. Uh Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So... Um, any, I, I haven't seen the, uh, Sharon said she was late on the lantern this week. It's not going to be out till later today, but, uh, did you send any questions that maybe we should be thinking about for Sunday, Allison? Um, uh, let's see if I can remember the questions. <laughs> I, I, I mean, most of them were centering around balancing what's going to happen in Jerusalem with the triumphant entry because like on that day there were two parades coming into jerusalem you had Pilate coming in from one side and jesus from the mount of olives and it was intentional on jesus's part to um you know come in on a donkey and come in humbly fulfilling a prophecy from zechariah but um you know just to compare and contrast you know, what Jesus was doing, he was protesting um, the discrimination and, you know, people were suffering and hurting. So you can't, there are two moods to Palm Sunday. And I think it's really common for us to just want to focus on the triumph and not Mm -hmm. look at the suffering, but we have to, like you said Mm -hmm. earlier, we have to get through holy heck Mm -hmm. yeah Mm -hmm. and we can't just bypass it all and get to easter so that i kind of the point absolutely absolutely we can't get to the to the resurrection without going through the crucifixion Mm -hmm. yes yeah so next week is going to be a tough week for all of us but we'll get through it um it's the most meaningful time yeah church uh Mm -hmm. actually for United Methodist denomination for any Christian denomination, Holy Week is the penultimate week. So mm-hmm. every year we get to remember and reflect. Mm-hmm. So, um, great. Let's go through some announcements then. I got a few, uh, not a lot this week. Like I said, Sharon is going to have the lantern out later today. But um, a quick reminder, we've got all church work day this Saturday from nine to one. If you want to join in, bring any tools, cleaning products, there's a lot to be done. They're going to have some breakfast snacks. So if you're food motivated, <laughs> there you go. I don't think we're food motivated. <laughs> I mean, we only have potlucks. Hey, so speak for yourself. Right. I'm it's kidding. Like, what? <laughs> I'm kidding. Hey, come to the table. Is that, <laughs> that's this week. Oh, my goodness. Um, I'm at Carol Neely's table, and she's doing lumpia and adobo. Uh, it's going to be a feast. Nice. <laughs> nice. But uh, we do have uh, Palm Sunday. So the Holy Week uh, events, service events and everything are coming up. Sunday is, of course, Palm Sunday, 930, our normal time for worship. We have a Monday, Thursday, 6 p.m. Tuesday service that uh, Melanie will be leading. And Martin and I will be there um, helping out with the Tuesday hymns. It will but- be beautiful. <laughs> Allison will be leading communion. Oh yeah, that's right. We're doing communion. All hands on deck. All hands. Yeah. And we have we have communion yeah, this Melanie, Sunday too. Melanie, you've been doing a great job with the Taize. People love it, so it's just been. Oh, thanks. I you did know, watch I the live talking. stream. I watched the live stream on Tuesday. Oh, good. Okay, I forgot the live stream was on, and I I didn't have my microphone on, so there were some hiccups there. But um, Martin and I were talking last week after the Taze that it's been good for us. Like it's centering, you know, just the nature of Taze is that it's, mm-hmm. cent- you know, that it's centering. And we were kind of saying like, that's been a good spiritual practice to keep us grounded through Lent is, is to practice it every week. So I well, love to say for that reason, it's just, <laughs> it, it just causes you to stop and breathe. I love it. Oh, it was a perfect break in the middle of my day on Tuesday. So, oh, good. And I can kind of disconnect from work and focus for a few minutes mm-hmm. and and just listen. It was great. Um, so we'll, and we have one more Tuesday today service too, don't mm-hmm. we? Yeah, we are gonna go ahead and do it on Tuesday because it's kind of been this certain kind of spiritual practice. So we don't want to miss the last time. And it'll be different than Thursday night. And so 
please come to both. Thursday night will be a totally different deal than than Tuesday. Um, and then, of course, sun- this Sunday we do have communion as well. Mm-hmm. So, um, and we are going. We started singing the communion responses last week. Or, I'm sorry, last month. Last month. So mm-hmm. we'll be doing that again. Um, Good Friday we have a service at 7 p.m. That's, I think, Good Friday. Um, Jerry Llewellyn singing "Were You There When They Crucified My Lord" mm-hmm. is like the For cheers. Yeah, <laughs> and he cheers. does it, he does it a cappella. He does it from the back of the church after everything mm-hmm. else is said and done. That's how we end the service, mm-hmm. and it just sends us out on that note, mm-hmm. literally. And I can't wait. And, um, yeah. And I'm hoping he's feeling better because, you know, he and um, Barb were both sick. So I'm hoping Mm -hmm. they're doing better now. Um, Easter Sunday, our Sunday morning service at 930. And there's an Easter egg hunt for the kids. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to do that during the godly play (coughs) time. So um, the older kids, the faith exploration class and the teenagers are going to go hide all the eggs. And then um, the godly play kids will hear the story while... The eggs are being hidden, and then it'll be a free-for-all candy toy fest. So that is on Easter Sunday morning. So they need to come to the sanctuary just like they do every other week. It'll be just normal schedule, and we'll do it it during godly play. Awesome. Like I said, Allison, while you're preaching, I'll be out hunting Easter eggs. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that's right. That's right. You're going to be pushing down little kids. Uh, Out of the way, kid. That's for me. Um, hey, I don't want to disrupt your flow, but can I go back to Easter Eve? Sure, sure, go ahead. So the families are invited at 5 o'clock p.m. on Easter Eve, Saturday night, um, to meet at the cross by the street. Um, we're going to lower the cross and and flower it like we do every year so that on Easter Sunday morning, it looks beautiful and full of palms and flowers. And um, so that's at 5 o'clock. You know, it probably take us an hour to do that. So um, join us at five if you want to help decorate the cross. Cool. That sounds awesome. <laughs> Fun. Um, what else is coming? Up? Oh, retreat signups are due by April 16th, which is right around the corner. Oh, for the women's retreat? Yes. Right. Okay. Um, and that's two weeks from this Sunday. So, which is also tax weekend. Yay. Get your taxes done. Don't even talk to me about that. I haven't finished mine yet. I haven't had time. Mine are fi- my mine are done. They're just not filed because I owe money. I have to work on that today. I don't or, or tomorrow. Ugh, I have to send them to the East Coast. But uh, you can <laughs> you can contact e, uh, Clara Bunch, email or call them. Call oh, to her. do my taxes? No, for signing up. <laughs> Darn. For the oh, okay. retreat <laughs> sign up. Uh, I was getting so excited. Yeah, send a check for 65 bucks for the retreat sign up. So I wanted to finish that before we get too pulled away. But taxes, you're on your own. All right. Claire, Claire's not gonna help. All right. Um <laughs> the emoji, the emoji. You know. <laughs> um endowment forms, they're being accepted through April. So see the lantern for more information. Um we have money. To use and uh, we have this every year so um, if you want to get a grant for something that it helps the church toward its mission of reaching out serving others send it in and uh, they're looking for help for the pride event on May 20th and um, I'll be honest I didn't know about that so. that's Placer Pride Oh, oh, okay. Uh-huh. Placer Pride is May 20th. And then we we'll also look for volunteers for Sacramento Pride, which is June 10th and 11th. I, I think that's right. I think the 10th is a Saturday. 11th is the Sunday with the parade. Yeah. Did you get the form for signing mm-hmm. up? Okay. I just wanted to yeah. make sure. I, okay. So I won't forward it to you. Okay. Yeah, I got it. And I'm getting some people to volunteer with us. So Saturday, it's like working in a booth and that sort of thing. And then Sunday, we'll um, we'll parade. So if I'm anyone so wants to go to the- doing that, I wish I could do it. Should I? I know. The church. I know. I'm totally skipping church that day. But no, we're taking a group from church. Um, and Excellent. our worship time doesn't really uh, work for for us getting to the parade on time. So right, because it starts at eleven. So just right? going to head early. Yeah, ten or eleven. Well, and you have to park. 
I think it's at yeah. 11, but yeah, yeah, you have to drive down there park and all yeah. that. So um, anyway, if anybody needs a ride, I'm happy to take whoever. Um, I can fit seven in my van. So, But are you going to go to the church first and then drive all the way back over? Oh. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. That. <laughs> yeah. Never mind. I'll yeah. meet you there. <laughs> I was going to say, because, you know, you're further away from the church than I am. You're in Davis. Yeah. And I'm in West Yeah, Sac. that's true. That's so. true. If people need a ride, though, I'm happy to come to the church and pick people up. We can yeah. talk about that later. That's June. Yeah, that's so sweet. Um, there's also an announcement in here that the Humanity Bags luncheon last Sunday was a huge success. It was. You guys, the fellowship hall looked so good. Of course, Sue Goebel never does anything halfway. I mean, it was so beautifully decorated. It was. And Jocelyn did a great job of heading up. They had fun doing the raffle. The meal was delicious. Hats off to the Goebel family, to Jocelyn. 14 youth showed up to help. Wow. It was. Yeah. And Sue had the whole family in the kitchen. It was great. It she was did. a family affair. I loved it. Yeah. And I'm so proud of them. They um they made more than their goal financially um before we even had the dinner. And then they made money at the dinner. Um, so I'm so happy for them that they're kind of got a little nest egg there. Um, and they worked so hard. It was so good. And actually, I heard a lot of people say, I miss things like this. I wish we did this kind of thing more often, you know, gathering to eat and that sort of thing. So well, great job to Joss and the Goebbels and the youth and everybody. We haven't really done stuff like that since the pandemic. So no. three years. It may be time to start bringing it back. I mean, yeah, last... and it was kind of fun, like the heritage dinner, you know, the dessert dash. Well, it's kind of the same thing. They did the raffle and people would go pick a dessert or whatever. It was it was fun. It was a lot of fun. That was the first time I'd done the heritage dinner since like 2015. Mm -hmm, it was great. Mm -hmm. But um, last Thursday, uh, the reason we couldn't record the podcast last week, I was in the office for the first time since March 13th, yeah. 2020. Uh -huh. So I, and honestly, it was great. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed going up and spending time with my uh -huh. coworkers and actually doing mm -hmm. some work together. Mm -hmm. so, uh, most of my teams are in either Dublin or Belfast, Ireland, or in Chicago. So, oh my yeah, my development team, they're all in Belfast or Dublin, Ireland. So I have to, that's okay. why I meet a lot with them on six, at 6.30 in the morning. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. So, but yeah. And then central time zone for Chicago, huh? They're two hours ahead. Yeah. Wow. And I do have a couple of people in Florida and Tennessee. So, wow. so yeah, so we're spread out. So it I doesn't really make sense for us to be in the office all the time. Yeah. Yeah. So, but I think we're going to start up about every other Thursday, Wednesday or Thursday, hmm. we're going to be in the office. So, but that's the, it for announcements, except one big one that. Somebody's turning 50 on April 15th. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. April 18th. Yes. April 18th. I will be 50. I'm so excited about being 50. You know, I, I really, I don't, well, I talked about this earlier. I don't know. I'm, I'm really excited about it. You know, some people don't make it to 50. It's, you know, I, I'm thrilled to be here and yeah. um, I'm in a good place in my life and I don't know. I'm just, it feels very celebratory. My kids tease me about being old and I'm like, well, whatever. I don't know. I just feel good about it. It feels good. 50 did not bother me at all. Same. It did not bother me it's at all. It's the best birthday ever. Oh, that's cool. 60, I kind of went, ooh, okay. But it was also, we were locked down. So I didn't that's have the normal right. celebration. Right. So Yeah, yeah. So normally I, d I do the whole birthday month thing starting because my birthday's the 30th okay. of November. I start on the first. Okay. It's celebration time that year. I was like, okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. 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 That was pretty much it. So, yeah. so 60, uh, 70 is going to be a different story. I think 70, I'm going to go the whole month again. So Party maybe even central. 60, yeah. 65, maybe even. So yeah. we'll see. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's all the announcements I got. Um, I don't think there's anything else. 
I, I, oh, so we're talking about your 50th, though. On Sunday morning, when you, you were up at the podium and said, I'm not old enough to be here yet. Oh, <laughs> Allison, I'm so sorry. That is yeah, not was, how I meant that. I it laughed. cracked me up. <laughs> yeah, I I mean, I'm not enough of a grown up. Like, I'm not mature enough to be behind the podium. I didn't mean it age wise. It, <laughs> no, it was hysterical. I think everybody in the congregation yeah, loved it, too. It made me laugh so hard. Well, I certainly oh. did not intend for it to be an age insult in any way. <laughs> I was insulting myself. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was funny all oh, nonetheless. <laughs> so um yeah, that's about it. I uh, like we talked earlier. I think uh we I got the draft script for Easter Sunday out to you to make sure that mm-hmm. I didn't miss anything and we're all good to go. So we're gonna be wrapping up this whole lent easter thing and moving into easter tide so are we doing anything special for easter the easter tide season this year not yet i mean we talked a little bit about it at worship committee i was thinking of maybe using the seven um wonders from that book we're doing on friday oh right Yeah, yeah yeah that's a possibility and um the wonders are Moral beauty, collective effervescence, nature, music, sacred geometry. Um, so I, it's good. I'll look at it and see if that's somewhere we want to go. Well, just know we got to get it done. Okay, <laughs> it's, it's here. No, it's around the corner. I know. I'm it's, preaching it's, the week after Easter. Are you? Sixteen. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Cool. And I'll um, be here. I'll be here too. I'll be in worship. Oh, which reminds me, after the um, service on the 16th, we're doing our safety training, our Alice training with the department. Um, That's so important for everybody to come to. I hate that it's important for us to be there, but it is. It's so important for us to be there. It is. So It'll be an hour training. um, And then the sheriff will walk around our campus and tell us what modifications we need to make, that sort of thing. You don't have to stay for that. It'd probably be good to have the trustees there and, and leadership council But it's not necessary for everybody to stay for that second 45 minutes to an hour. But the first hour, yes. Yeah. When you mentioned the 16th, I said, oh, something else is going on that day. And I could not remember. So thank you for refreshing the memory. And then also the the night of the 16th at five o'clock, I'm meeting with high school students and their parents because we're starting a confirmation class in May. And so this is just kind of an informational, here's what to expect. Here's what it looks like. Here's what we're going to do. That sort of thing. Um. So the parents wanted to go ahead and start confirmation. You know, normally follow the school year kind of thing. They're like, no, let's get it going. So we're going to start in May. Cool. I think it's great. And I'm, I'm glad the kids are interested in it. I mean, I think- uh, well, their parents are interested in it. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the parents are like, you need to do confirmation. It's up to you if you want to be confirmed and join the church. But the parents want them to learn that history right. and and all that, which I respect that, you know. And, and we've had kids who've gone through confirmation class before, but did not get confirmed. Yeah, and mm-hmm, a couple for of sure. Who, who did later, but uh-huh, not immediately uh-huh. after. So, yeah, yeah, it's a great time to learn. You know, we hear a lot in the news. Confirmation is a great time to learn about all the reasons you should be proud to be a Methodist. There's so much beautiful history and. Yeah. and Kids are just like, whoa, I didn't know that, you know, so. And I served as a mentor one year. Yeah. And uh, Mm -hmm. I learned a lot because I didn't know a lot. I I didn't grow up Methodist. Yeah. And really didn't know a lot about the Methodist church. So I served as a mentor, I think my second year at the church. So, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um, it was actually really, really informative, educational and fun. Yeah. It was fun. Grew up going to confirmation. It wasn't fun. It was a total pain. It was boring. It was every Wednesday after school for months and months. And the senior pastor would sit there and lecture to us. And we were in sixth grade. Yeah. So number one, we do it with older kids now who can, who are actually contemplate. You know, the if you look at, at statistics and studies about development of spirituality in kids and teens, you got to go older. You know, so we don't even do it till high school. Um, and that being said. I don't want it to be boring. I want it to be fun and engaging and I want them to be proud of their church. And, yeah. Yeah. Well, I think uh, part of my mentorship was I took um, my mentee 
Spencer and we went mm. to the Catholic church so we could observe how mm-hmm. other uh, Christian denominations worship. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I hadn't been to a Catholic church in forever. I thought it was amazing. Mm-hmm. So it was great. Yeah. That'll be part of it. We'll do a service project together. And, um, and just getting to know people and spending time mm-hmm. with him and his family. And it yeah. was amazing. It was amazing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, that's all we've got for announcements. Do you guys, anything else we want to bring up before we move into joys and concerns? We've got a few of those. Mm. Let's go ahead and start. Um, one that I've been worried about this week, Jim Schrader. Yeah, He's back in the ER. They were back in the ER, I think on Tuesday, Tuesday night. Um, he has pneumonia mm-hmm. and also possibly the flu. Yeah. So, but I talked to Corinne this morning and she said he's breathing really good today. Good. Okay. And so far, Corinne is not, has not caught anything. So good. So keep them in prayer. Uh, they said they're going to be gone from choir for a while. And I totally mm-hmm. get that. So mm-hmm. uh, we've had a couple other choir members gone with, with illness too. So hopefully we'll have those back tonight. Um, Chuck and Pat Hunt and Jerry Llewellyn. So uh, Gunnar is healing. Uh, I know he was in the mm-hmm. hospital last weekend. He came home on Sunday. So glad that he's home. Uh, Mary Jo Ortiz asked for prayers of strength and wisdom for her friend, Sue. She's facing the difficult decision to stop cancer treatment. Um, we heard this one at church on Sunday. Um, it says anonymous niece, Melanie, and advanced stages no, of it Alzheimer's. Was, it was uh, Linda Kennedy and Kathy. Yeah. It, yeah. It was- their niece. Yeah. Uh, she's at advanced stage of Alzheimer's, has pneumonia, is beginning hospice. And mm-hmm. so we're she's asking for prayers. Linda's asking for prayer, uh, prayers for comfort for her and all of okay. the family. So and then George and Cheryl Blind's daughter Shauna lost her husband, passed away suddenly mm-hmm. in his sleep. He was only 45. And uh Shauna has three young children, six, eleven, and fourteen. So Prayers for her and the family. Um, and also, and jo- George and Shara too, because I know there have been some health struggles, and um, I miss seeing them at mm-hmm, church. Mm-hmm. Well, I miss everybody, but yeah. Um, and the friend, I, just, it's been hard. I know, and you know, George was part of the band for a long, long time, and we were hoping at one point he would be able to come back. I still do hope that, but um, with his health concerns, it's been hard. So. Yeah, I talked to Shara for a little bit and I said, you don't want me cooking for you, but if I can go and sit with George and hang out with him, Mm -hmm. get out and shop, I'm glad to do it. But Mm. trust me, none of you want me cooking for you. You make the best. um, Yes, yes. She she made it for me and James. That's the only thing I know how to make. But you do it so well. Hey, and stick to you what you know. Your arteries can harden as you eat it. I'm from the South. We're from the South. We get right. It. We have arteries of steel. <laughs> we fry We fry every vegetable known to mankind. So. Right. Okra. Exactly. Okra. Yes, fried okra. Fried okra. Oh, my goodness. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, stop. I haven't had lunch yet. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, I think the last one I've got is Fred and Kay Berryman asked for prayers on the death of Dave Walls, who was a lifelong friend of Fred's. So mm-hmm. keep them in prayer too. Any others that we want to lift up? Yeah, Bert Smith. Um, we had the graveside mm-hmm. in the service for Bob on Tuesday. I so. was very sorry I couldn't sing for that. Um, she called me last Thursday and there's just no way I could get away. I was giving presentations all afternoon on Tuesday. And how was that in the rain? Oh, it was cold. cold right? It was cold. Were you all in a covered, like in the pavilion or something? We were in the pavilion for the service and then okay. the graveside. But um, yeah, it, it, mm. it was a beautiful tribute. Uh, yeah. Son, you know, they gave a lovely tribute for his dad. Good, good. Um, that's all I got. I think I'm still wet from that. Oh. And it was blowing. It was cold. It, like, oh, I just, mm, my heart felt for them. Yeah. Um. Anyone, any others? 
Um, not that I can think of right now. Can you? Can, no, not that I can think of either. Um, Allison, you want to lead us in a word of prayer then? Sure. Um, gracious God, as we move into this time of Holy Week, can we genuinely take the time to be holy and to be present in this season and to walk on this journey with Jesus, with Jesus and not try to rush it and get to Easter Sunday? Um, also, we hold in our hearts and prayers all those who are sick or hurting, in need of healing, whether they're walking darker paths or just going through times of great sorrow. Just please um, help us to hold everybody, hold our community in our hearts, thoughts, and prayers. But we're also grateful, oh God, for this day, for birthdays and important milestone celebrations. We're happy for the youth and their families that really want their children to know our beautiful history. Um, and thank you for this team, for Martin, Ray, Melanie, um, and just thank you for all the many blessings in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. And you. <laughs> and you. Sorry, I keep muting myself so I don't cough into the microphone. No. Um, that's it. Other than come see us. We've got a lot going on over the next couple of weeks for Holy Week and Easter. Uh, we would love to have you as a part of it, either online or in person at 6414 mm -hmm. Brace Road in Loomis, California. Our website, loomismethodist.org. It's going to be popping up somewhere on the screen. So click. Sit we down. all you can't click it. Yeah. I could make it down. <laughs> like a screen. song. Yeah. <laughs> I think we but, should do uh, that. Amazing Grace. Or something. Amazing oh, yeah. Grace. I can play that on the ukulele, by the way. Oh, <gasps> Maybe you, you should know, do that sometime on the podcast. Yeah. I, I, I really I, should. I think I'd rather I put the bag over my head like the anonymous um, <laughs> spectator at football, lousy football teams. They put the brown bag with the cutout. That could be me doing yeah. this. There used to be the unknown comic. Do you remember? That's that? right. Yes. What show was that? was that? Was that, uh, was that on? That was probably before your time, quite frankly. Yeah, you're too young. I'm only um, 50. Was that on the gong show? Yes. I think it was the yeah. gong show. And this guy, this comic would come out with a brown bag on his head and, and tell jokes and they would gong him up. Yeah, it was it was funny. <laughs> okay. Melanie's it was, it was my a time. 70s thing, yeah. Melanie yeah, yeah. can't remember the gong show. I was I was too busy watching Sesame Street. Probably. <laughs> Probably. Um <laughs> but yeah. Um, I was thinking, so that little music that brings us in and out of the show every week, it's getting a little old. So I think I might need to get us a new theme song. Something upbeat. Yeah. <laughs> Something that we won't get a copyright strike for on YouTube. Oh, <laughs> oh. yeah. I, I had uh, all sorts of great songs going through my head, but nope. We, yeah. you it sounds do. like Ray needs to compose something. <laughs> well, I, I composed that for... Um, the church services when we went virtual so it's just a little okay. ditty to close uh -huh. it up. yeah so maybe i'll think of something new maybe um okay. or pick a public domain hymn okay we can use those all we want so amazing grace yeah how great right. they are. then uh i guess we will get into it this week i'll see you both on sunday morning yeah we'll, we'll, we'll kick this kick this week off so Live long and prosper. <laughs> Force be with you. Love you both and love everybody out there. Be good to each other. Bye. Bye. Bye.